In this part of the lecture, we will take a brief look at the log to model replay algorithms, which are also another class of core algorithms in process mining. So the purpose of log to model replay algorithms is to replay an event log against a process model. It is needed for log animation, performance enhancement, including overlaying frequency and duration metrics on a process model, and conformance checking. But it is not limited to those three, and it can be used in other cases as well. Replaying itself is trivial if every trace in the log can be parsed by the process model precisely. But this is not always the case. In practice, process models are often simplified views of a process that do not capture every single exception and every execution path that is actually possible. The most basic though not optimal approach to replaying is token-based replay with local error connection, correction. And this is the first one that we are going to look at in this part of the lecture. So the idea of token-based replay is actually very straightforward and simple. We will use a token per case to represent where we are in the current ongoing case with respect to the given process model. And we have a quite simple example right here on the slide. We have a simple trace, A, B, C, E, and a relatively simple process model to go along with it. At the very beginning of token-based replay, we place one token at the beginning of the process model, and then we look at the trace and figure out what are the events that we need to execute. So the first event is going to be A. Well, this is simple. We just move the token forward, executing A, and also consuming it from the trace. Then we see that we have to execute B, but in order to do that, we have to go through the parallel split gateway, which is going to split our single token into two tokens. Then we can execute B and just move that token forward. The next event that we have to execute is C, but in order to execute that, we have to go through the XOR split gateway, just in this case, moving to the lower branch of that gateway, and now we are ready to execute C. Again, we are going to move the token forward, consume C, and then we can proceed with the replay. Now we can see that E is the next one to be executed. So here we have to go first through the XOR join gateway at the bottom branch, and then through the parallel gateway just before E. The parallel gateway is going to also join the to two tokens that we had previously into one, and now we can execute E, and we reach the end of the process model with a single token. And this is a successful replay where the model and the log matched perfectly. However, this is not always the case. In some cases, we can have traces that actually do not match the event, do not match the process model precisely. So here we have one example. A, C, E with exactly the same process model as before. Well, with A, we don't have any problem. A is allowed to execute, and we can just move forward. But now, we have to execute C. So in order to go, go forward with our token, we first go through the parallel split gateway. Then on the lower branch, we move the token forward once more. We execute C, and now we have to execute E. However, we kind of run into a problem that E requires first going through the parallel gateway where we have one token from the lower branch, but no tokens from the upper branch. So here we actually have a missing token. And in token-based replay, especially if we want to check the conformance between the model and the event log, we now have to take this token, record that it was missing, we place it in the model, and then we proceed as normal. So we go through the parallel join gateway, we execute E, and we reach the end. However, crucially, now we also have one token left behind, and it is left in the model. This shouldn't happen, and this is another misalignment between the event log and the model at hand. Another log to model replay approach is trace alignments. Here the basic idea is that if a trace cannot be parsed by the model, the misalignments between the trace and the model can be represented as an alignment, consisting of matches, moves in the log, 
and moves in the model. Let's take a look at a, another example where we have quite a simple trace and also a simple process model. So here we have the alignment where the top row corresponds to the trace and the bottom row corresponds to a path in the model, also called the adjusted trace. If we start going through it step by step, then we'll notice that for the event or activity A, everything is fine. It is the first event in the trace and also the first activity in the model. After that, the model requires due to the parallel gateway there that the event C has to occur. However, if you look at the trace, it never occurs. So this is a move in the model only, meaning that C is an activity required by the model, but it never occurs in the trace. With D, we can see it occurs both in the trace, in the correct place, and also in the model. So this is again move in both or a match. When it comes to B, then this occurs in the trace, but never occurs in the model. So this is a move in log only. E is again fine and H is fine. Now note that the way we have represented things here is that if a move in the log cannot be mimicked by the model and vice versa, then such no moves are going to be denoted by double greater than signs. And those can have a cost. So the standard cost function is going to be move in trace only, the cost is one. Move in model only, the cost is also one. Move in both, then the cost is going to be zero. However, those costs can be different. They can be based around specific activities and the costs that are, you are going to use are going to heavily affect the alignments that the algorithms are going to produce. Also, we have optimal alignments. So those are the alignments with minimum deviation cost. Usually those are, however, expensive to calculate. And as I mentioned before, note here that the optimal alignment is actually going to depend on the cost function that you use. But speaking of trace alignments, we also have to cover the notion of optimal trace alignment. And the basic idea here is that for each trace, we should find the alignment that has the smallest cost and use this alignment when replaying the trace against the model. So for example, if we look at the trace that we had before along with the model that we had before, the, optimal, uh, the cost of optimal alignment would be two. However, the cost of worst case alignment, assuming the default cost function, is going to be 10. And this worst case alignment me basically means that we first are going to replay the entire event log and then all the activities required by the model. And now to recap, we have covered algorithms for automated PPMN process model discovery, such as alpha algorithm, heuristics miner that we actually didn't discuss much, the inductive miner, and also the details of split miner. These algorithms strike different trade-offs between fitness, precision, and model simplicity. We have also covered some algorithms for replaying traces against PPMN models. Here we covered token place replay with local error correction, meaning that you take token, you place tokens whenever necessary into the model, and also you count the tokens that are left after the process execution. And we also took a brief look at how to work with optimal alignments. Now, in terms of the structure of the course, in this week, we covered process mining algorithms. And the next lecture about process mining in practice, unfortunately, will not be recorded for YouTube, at least not at this date. We might change the idea in the future, but for now, this will be skipped. And instead, we will directly go to the course recap and future trends. Thank you for listening, and I hope it was very enlightening for you.